بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وٹ یو آر اباؤٹ ٹو ہیئر از اے ٹو اسٹوری آف مائی انکاؤنٹر ود اے گروپ آف کرسچن ایونجلسٹ ون ایوننگ ان دا ایئر نائنٹین نائنٹی نائن I found in my mailbox a laminated letter size attractive card printed in multicolor. It had the often quoted passage from the Bible. The text read, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16 An invitation memo was attached to the card. It was from a neighborhood group of seed sowers who were planting the seed of Christian beliefs. There was a telephone number of the group. I dialed the number and a lady answered the call. I tried to explain to her that what Apostle John had written in Greek texts was unique, one-of-a-kind son. In the 4th century, translator Jerome changed it into only begotten son when he published the Bible in Latin. The lady evangelist tried to explain, they both mean one and the same thing. When I expressed that it was not so, she suggested that I should attend the meeting and ask the minister. I accepted the offer and attended the meeting with a copy of my Bible. The meeting was in a school hall in East Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. A large group of evangelists with their family members were present. I heard two sermons. Sermon number one, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Only our faith in the resurrected Jesus saves our souls. He quoted a text from Paul's epistle. The text reads, reads If Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is also in vain. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. That was the summary of the first sermon. Sermon number two by a younger minister. At the trial of Jesus by the Roman governor Pilate, the governor gave two options to the public. He could release one of the two prisoners. According to the minister, one was Jesus, the righteous God, and another was Barabbas, a murderer, thief, and Satan. He expressed the people at the trial made the wrong choice. He then asked the congregation, What is your choice today? The Satan or Lord Jesus? I asked the young minister if it was okay to ask questions. He said, Yes. Number one question. Do you believe Jesus died on the cross? He answered yes. My question number two. Was the dead body of Jesus laid in a rock tomb? He answered yes. My third question was. Was Jesus raised by the Almighty God on the third day? His answer was again yes. I informed the minister. I see two unequal entities. Jesus was dead. God the Almighty was not dead but alive. Jesus could not raise himself. You have asked us to choose between Jesus and Satan. What about the Almighty God who raised Jesus? An elderly minister jumped in and said, God and Jesus are one, John 10.30. I replied in the marginal notes it is stated that the Greek term used by John means unity and not the numerical one which has a different gender in the Greek language. So the minister quoted the words of Jesus, The Father is in me and I am in the Father. John chapter 10 verse 38. I suggested reading of John chapter 17 verses 22 and 23 which says, And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them, the disciples, so that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, thou and thou in me, that they may be perfected in unity. Are we to consider the twelve disciples 
as co-equals with God the Father? Then a lady minister members suggested that I should read 1 John 5, 7. I said, let us read verses 7 and 8 together. Verse number 7, in the heaven, the Father, the word meaning Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. Verse number 8, on the earth, the Spirit, the water and blood are one. Can we replace blood with water in our body? No. One gentleman suggested, read the commandment of baptism. The command reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all, nation, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. I replied, I see three names. Where does, where does it mention that they are co-equal? I informed him that I am a Muslim and our confession of faith declares, number one, there is no God but Allah. Number two, Prophet Muhammad is a messenger and servant of Allah. Two names, but they are not co-equal. Once the minister knew I was a Muslim, he suggested the parents to tell young boys and young girls to go outside and play. An elderly man quoted the phrase spoken by Jesus, I am he, John 8:28. He meant Jesus was repeating what God had replied to Prophet Moses. When asked who he was, God said to Moses, I am who I am. I quoted the entire verse 828. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, then shall you know that I am He and that I do nothing of myself. But I speak these things as Father has taught me. Does the Almighty God need a teacher? One person from the meeting said, We all believe in Trinity with faith. You are trying to argue and understand that with a human brain. There is a famous saying, If you try to understand the concept of Trinity with your mind, you will lose your mind. But if you deny Trinity, you will lose your soul. I replied, Did not Jesus teach the first and the foremost commandment was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Mark chapter 12, verses 29 and 30. Why should I leave my mind outside? When I enter the church or a mosque, power of reasoning is a priceless gift from God to mankind. We use it every day in our daily life. That was the end of the meeting. I went home and took notes of what had transpired. Before I conclude this presentation on YouTube, I wish to inform the viewers that Jesus has clearly declared Thus, he was sanctified by God, meaning he was made holy before he was sent into the world. John chapter 10 verse 36 Unless the evangelists do produce a verse which records the heavenly father was sanctified by Jesus, the claim that Jesus and the heavenly father are co-equal remains unsubstantiated. And the following eternal message of Jesus prevails. And this is the eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you had given to me to do. John chapter 17 verses 3 and 4. Please let your Christian friends, fellow students, and co-workers hear this presentation. Thank you.